Welcome to Crotoni Entertainment. I'm Chris. And I'm Bree. And Bree disagreed with the length of this video. I did. It seems very short. Well, nobody watches the whole things anyway. Aww. So we're painting Phantom Ranger, but we're not painting him as Phantom Ranger. We are painting the Morphinot from the... <laughs> Best the, name. It's the only good thing so far about the Power Rangers Universe comic. It's The, the comic is not inspiring me. Issues 1 and 2 were not great. Uh, issue 3 is sitting in my pool at the comic book store, and I'm, I'm going to pick it up, but uh, hope I was hoping to pick it up alongside Power Ranger 16 because they forgot to put that in my pool and had to order a new one for me. So that's kind of a bummer. But we're doing the Morphin now. So this is a white on white with gold trim ranger uh, because you know what? The black on black silver trim wasn't inspiring me. I have too many models from other game systems that have that kind of look. Yeah. Um, and you know, yeah. I just I just didn't feel like doing it again. So I've been putting this miniature off. So we started by painting the entire thing with Citadel Contrast Apothecary White. That's going to add a fair level of gray to the miniature to be a base for our white. Uh, then we're using our Vallejo Dead White, um, as usual, primed in Krylon 2X, uh, perfect gray. With the stuff in the Spray thing. stuff. And then we're doing a moderately heavy dry brush of the uh, Vallejo Dead White. Um, any white will do. A little um, white will do you? I went with a dry brush for a very specific reason. And that'll hopefully become You're more lazy. obvious in a moment. No, no, not at all. Not at all. When you see the next step, you'll see why there's actually a specific reason I did the dry brush. Okay. Um, because for it. Because now we're doing brush layering. So Ooh. he's got like the white suit, but he's got like these armor plates on him. So the dry brushing white is going to give a texture and a whiteness to the suit underneath. And we're doing layered on white to the armored plates. So even though he's <laughs> white on white, Bree's going to cough while we're doing this. I, it's a seven minute long video and I'm like, I'm going to die. Even though it's white on white, we're going to have two different whites going on. Now, Ooh. I did have to do uh, a couple of coats of this white because I did overly thin it down and that's on me. Um, a lot of the Vallejo Shame. paints, I know, a lot of the Vallejo paints don't require as much thinning as Citadel or Army Painter paints and I just over thinned. So I had to do a couple coats of the white on all the armor plates. That was followed up with Liberator Gold. We've got a couple different gold options we've been using on the Rangers. Um, I wanted to do, you know, and it's, it's all every man style. Anybody can do this stuff. Um, and there's a, there's, um, a simple gold technique you can do that will still have depth. It won't be as neat looking as like what we did on like the Omega Rangers with like the light reflecting gold type stuff. Right. But you can use a lighter tone of gold, like this Liberator Gold. I'm a huge fan of the Liberator Gold. It's actually funny. A lot of people who use the Games Workshop stuff, at least that I see on, on the Twitterverse and whatnot, uh, really live by the Retributor Gold because it's this deep, strong gold. It I is. prefer the Liberator. Because it's, well, I like the Liberator myself because it looks more like a weathered gold like a gold that's seen some stuff i don't know if i call it weathered um it's not as strong it's not as gold. strong but anyway we're painting all the trim and his pistol with this gold and that's that's really all we're doing here is just painting it gold now on the thinner areas of trim yeah that's enough you don't need to do anything else with it if you don't want to yeah you could highlight it with silver. You could use an even brighter gold. You could wash it. But on the thin areas around the plate, kind of like we're painting right here, yeah. I didn't bother doing anything extra. We do not However, do silver and gold. when you have all the gold on him, you see there are areas with more gold. So like the area around the face plate, the area around that chest harness, and the area around the pistol have a lot more gold. Didn't Michael Jackson wear this costume? Probably. <laughs> um, so we've got our, our Citadel... Um, Black Templar. You don't have to use a contrast paint for this. You can use any black you want, but he has a black visor. Uh, at least I think he had a black visor. Oh, no. It doesn't matter at this point. We want the black visor. We'll pretend if, if it wasn't a black visor, we'll pretend this is me being unique. Now, if you wanted to, you could do like a light streak on the visor. Oh, yeah. Kind of like light reflecting off it. Um, we do some stuff similar to that, like on the, the car video for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Yeah. How we kind of have like the, the tint of the windshield and then there's the white line. Like, you could do that on this helmet. We're not doing it here because I'm lazy. Uh, that's where the lazy kicks back in. There's so we're, the lazy. So we're using the Vallejo black here today because, again, I'm lazy and it was the closest black to me. <laughs> this is <laughs> – I, I regret this. Oh, you you got regrets? Uh, for all of March's models, and I have completed all of March's Power Ranger mini already i did the vallejo black on the base and it didn't cover as well as i wanted it to probably because again i i over thinned the paints for this video and i i think i over thinned the black on all of them and i actually had to go back and do a second coat of black on all of them before i put my sealer on them uh which was a little obnoxious so 
This is one of the few times I would say stick with the Citadel Abaddon Black because I've never had any issues over watering that and getting coverage. Uh, this is a fine example of you don't have to stick to one company if you don't want to. Um, and we, I think we're going to do an obligatory games workshop video at some point uh, here. I just didn't want to raise as much controversy just yet. But anyway, we've got our Agrax Earthshade. This is the color I've decided to wash the bigger gold areas with. So he's got this chest harness, the area around the helmet. We're using the Agrax Earthshade because uh, gold takes well to brown washes. Uh, and uh, you could use like a sepia tone. You could use you could use a black if you wanted to. I chose to do the Agrax Earthshade. It's a little warmer. It's not quite the sepia, which I think is probably the more yeah. common wash people use. And I always like to do something just a little, just a little bit, a little bit weird, a little, little bit different. And I will say, if you're gonna do a gold, and then uh, maybe avoid doing a known oil wash, it gives it a different. It makes it muddier. Yeah, it, 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 it does. It does make it look warm. Yeah, it, it um, does give that worn shot. And if you're doing somebody like one of the Rangers or something like that, and you don't want them to look like they, they've seen some stuff, avoid the Null Oil. So yeah, I don't do a lot of weathered miniatures. I think I'm going to do some weathering on Wizard of Deception because there's not much detail on him right. uh, outside of black on black. Yep. So I'll probably do some weathering on him to give some depth of color. But generally speaking, I don't like to do weathered miniatures. I like to do miniatures as if they just showed up. And that's just what I like to do. Uh, they got their shiny new things from Zordon. Uh, well, not even necessarily that, but you know, I, I like the uh, one of one of the fun one of the fun things. Let's be honest, one of the fun things about Power Rangers when they do ridiculous kick flips into the fight for no reason and just start screaming. Yeah. Um, so, sure. I, so anyway, we're painting the rim of this one white because we are considering, and then we're doing a ring of black that doesn't cover all of it. Um, this was a little messy on the camera here. I'm, I'm going to touch it up off camera later. It doesn't have to be perfect. The reason I'm doing a ring of black and a ring of white, if you watched our Age of the Grid video we put out recently, the Ranger review, we're considering Phantom Ranger, because he was also the Morphinaut, to be a white ranger and a black ranger for purposes of like forever ranger squads. So where I've been putting the ranger color on the ring of every base, I'm doing kind of a half and half here. Yes. Um, I didn't do a true half with the black here because the top of the base is already black. And I thought a true going halfway up would really just kind of neutralize the white. Yeah. So I just kind of kept it on like the lower fourth. Of the now lower he looks third, like an so Oreo thing. Uh, he kind of does. He's the Oreo ranger. <laughs> anyway, the Morphinaut's all complete. It's a very simple miniature to do when you use a couple cheaty techniques like drivers. And you see here, see that cloth and plate difference? This is where you really see it. Yeah, It adds it depth good. to white on white. Uh, but anyway, like and subscribe for more content. Hit the bell button for notifications. Check out High Voltage Wear on Etsy. Uh, link in the description below. We'll see you next time. Bye!